Good morning. We're going to talk today about how organic chemists represent and draw organic molecules. Okay, so you've probably seen molecules drawn like this before, whether that's at school or in a textbook. Now these types of representations are incredibly helpful for those that are just beginning to learn chemistry. Okay, they they introduce concepts that, for instance, that atoms can be bonded to one another, that for instance carbon can make four bonds, those sort of ideas. The trouble is there's a number of problems with this. Okay? Most obvious of it is that they take a long time to draw and for all but the simplest of molecules they get very complicated uh, very quickly. So overlapping hydrogens and overlapping carbons some other more fundamental problem is that you know, for instance, that uh, molecules have three-dimensional shape. So if we look at the three-dimensional shape of butane, which is the molecule that should have drawn on the other page, we, we can see that we have, if we have grey carbons and blue hydrogens, we can see that the molecule has a three-dimensional shape um, to it. This representation doesn't convey that information. Okay, It looks as though it's perfectly flat. It looks like every carbon and hydrogen, every hydrogen is 90 degrees um, apart, Okay, which we know isn't the case. Okay. Um, you've met in previous lectures um, that the carbon here is sp3 hybridized and therefore it's tetrahedral in shape. So rather than being 90 degrees as, as the school type representation would suggest, the eight bond angles in here are closer to 109 degrees. Okay, So the molecule is, is bent. You can see this, the carbon atoms, because of this bent structure, adopt this sort of zigzag arrangement. So chemists need two things. They need a quick way that can convey information and looks easy to draw. And they need to be able to convey three-dimensional shape as well. Okay. Chemists use a system that's called uh, line drawings or skeletal drawings. Okay. And I can quickly draw the molecule that we've got here, which is butane. Okay. And you'll see it immediately what we've done is we've stripped off all the hydrogens, so the hydrogens aren't there, and we've not written out all the carbons. Okay. Instead what we're left with is a zigzag line which represents the bonding between each of the carbon atoms. Okay. So if we flick back to our three-dimensional model again, here is the same zigzag line. We're now starting to represent a bit of that three-dimensional space and that zigzag. Okay. At every point, so here, and every inflection point, like here, we have a carbon atom. Okay? Right, every time we bend the chain, that's a carbon atom. Okay? Now, we can, um, chemists know that carbon makes four bonds. So, what we know when we're looking at a molecule like this and a drawing like this is well, if we look at this carbon atom here we've only drawn one bond to it that means we've got three bonds that aren't shown and on that three bonds we have three hydrogens likewise this position here we have two bonds drawn to it one, two Okay, carbon makes four bonds, so that means we have two hydrogens on that position. Here, we've got carbon, and it's got two lines drawn to it, two bonds to it. That means this position here has two hydrogens. Okay. Finally, this endpoint here has one bond drawn to it. That means, because carbon has four, bond, uh, four bonds to it, that means there has to be three hydrogens to it. 
Okay, we compare this to the structure above. We find this carbon has three hydrogens to it. This carbon has two hydrogens to it. This carbon has two hydrogens to it, and this carbon has three hydrogens to it. Okay, so we've uh, you're hopefully starting to see that we can actually build up and get convey a lot of information in just a few lines, basically. Okay, let's extend our this simple molecule and let's start to convey a few other concepts. Okay. You've met that carbon can be bonded to other uh, elements apart from hydrogen. Okay. We want to say um, attach carbon to chlorine. All we do is draw a line, it's a bond, and write the atomic symbol, so in this case for chlorine, Cl, and that's it, basically. Um, if we are interested in uh, including, for instance, a oxygen in this chain, we can do that. Oxygen makes two bonds, so we make sure that oxygen now has two bonds going to it. This position here often confuses people, I'll be honest. But this is just a uh, carbon and it's got three hydrogens attached. It's got this carbon to oxygen bond. That's one bond. We know carbon makes four bonds, so there's three hydrogens attached to this position. Okay. What we can also do is we can show multiple bonds. So, for instance, a carbon carbon double bond, all we do is we draw another line in. Okay. We can uh, do the same thing for a triple bond, so single bond, triple bond, like that. Um, and we can start to, to convey lots of information about the molecule in those sort of terms. So in this sort of molecule, this is ethane, okay, we have a carbon here and a carbon here, okay. These, this carbon here has three bonds drawn to it. One, two, three. That means that there's a hydrogen attached to this end. And I'm going to draw it in just so that you know that this hydrogen is here. Okay. Likewise, this carbon here has three bonds to it. One, two, three. And there's a hydrogen attached to that end. Okay. So we're building up from, from with these simple lines, quite a lot of structural complexity in, in the organic molecules that we can draw. Okay, there's one thing that we've not talked about yet, and that's our um, three dimensional space issues. So here is our butane chain again. And let's say, for instance, that we're going to put a chlorine atom coming off of. Of this uh, this atom here, okay. Chlorine is now shown in green. Okay, uh, you'll see that the chlorine atom is now sticking out towards us. Okay, the hydrogen is behind, and we've got this methyl group CH3 to the left, and we've got this ethyl group CH2 to the right. Okay. How do we draw that? Well, that's fairly straightforward. So if we draw our butane chain again. Okay, so here's our butane chain. Okay, and we have a chlorine atom, which is coming off of this atom, uh, atom here, and that's coming towards us. So the way we show things coming towards us is with a solid wedge. Okay, it's a solid bond. And then we can attach, just write the element symbol to that. Okay, so solid wedge means something's coming towards us. Okay. If something's going away from us, so let's say for instance we now have a fluorine, 
Okay. Yes. Flirting is going away from us. And we've drawn that using this dashed wedge now. So we've had a, a solid wedge for coming towards us, and we've got this dashed wedge for going away from us. Okay. Right. So we've now got, we've introduced the idea that we could draw um, a zigzag chain for to show carbon, a carbon chain. We can introduce elements by drawing the uh, writing their um, atomic symbol. We can draw multiple bonds between elements, and we can now introduce three-dimensional space using these solid and dashed wedges. Okay, let's look at add a more complicated example to to pull all these concepts together. Okay. Here's a compound called biotin. It's a vitamin, and it's incredibly important to um, individuals' health. Now, what we have here at the centre is we have this carbon chain, okay, shown by this zigzag chain. Okay, we look at this carbon atom here. This carbon atom has a single bond to this oxygen on the right, and a double bond to this oxygen here. This functional group is called the carboxylic acid, and you'll meet that in later later lectures. Okay. We see that this carbon atom here is coming towards us. Okay, we've got a solid wedge here, and that means it's coming out of the page towards us. This dashed wedge shows that this hydrogen here is going behind the page page that we're looking at. Okay, so it's going away from us. Okay. We can count the number of hydrogens we have. So on this position here, for instance, we have two bonds that we can see. Carbon makes four bonds. So that means we have two hydrogens that we can't see, that aren't shown, just for clarity. Okay. Likewise, here, this carbon atom has one, two, three, four bonds to it. That means, in this position, there are no hydrogens. Okay. Okay. So, we've gone from simple alkane butane up to quite a complicated uh, vitamin. Uh, you'll see that we're drawing on the same lessons. Okay. Let's just go the other way and quickly interpret uh, a molecule and from just its drawing we're going to work out what its molecular formula is. Okay? So, uh, I'm just going to draw a random molecule. Okay. And what we are going to do is we are going to count all the, uh, all the all the all the carbons and all the hydrogens and all the oxygens and we're going to get molecular formula for this molecule. Okay. Right. Okay, this is a completely random molecule, probably we can use this. And we're just going to count everything up. Okay, and we'll do the simple things first. Okay, so we have one chlorine. Okay, that's here, the Cl group. We have one oxygen here, and we have one nitrogen. Okay, now we're going to count number of carbons. Okay, so we're going to go start here and go one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven carbons. Okay. Now we're going to count the number of hydrogens. Okay. And I'm going to annotate this diagram as we're going, so just so that we don't forget where we are. So this position here, this carbon here, has one bond drawn to it. So that means it's got three hydrogens attached to it. 
oxygen has a hydrogen attached to it, so one hydrogen. So this carbon here has four bonds to it, therefore it's got no hydrogens on it. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds to it. Remember this is a double bond, so there's two bonds there. So that's zero hydrogens there. This carbon here, on the other hand, has two hydrogens attached to it. It's got two bonds drawn to it. Remember, carbon makes four bonds, so that means we've got two hydrogens. This bond here, this carbon here, has three bonds drawn to it. That and this double bond, that means it has one hydrogen drawn to it. This carbon has two hydrogens bonded to it. This carbon has two hydrogens. And let's not forget the nitrogen, which has one hydrogen. Okay. Okay. All we need to do now is add these up. Okay. So we have one, four, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve hydrogens. Okay, so we're just going to write out its molecular formulae, and we have C7, H12, NOCl. Okay, remember that your the number of atoms gets shown as subscript. Leave us with our molecular formulae. Okay, so. We've gone from a, a structure that we've not met before and we've been able to work out its molecular formulae. And from that we can calculate other things, for instance, its molecular weight. Okay. Um, so, hopefully you've seen that the drawing organic molecules isn't actually that difficult. That the ideas and concepts are fairly straightforward. And the thing that will tricks most people when they first start is counting the number of hydrogens. Okay, Carbon makes four bonds. Count the number of bonds to the carbon and you'll be able to work out the number of hydrogens. 